In this video, we're learning about water. So we'll cover the structure of water, and we'll also take a look at its following functions too. As a solvent and metabolite, as a transport medium, in temperature control, and finally, as a habitat as well. Let's start by understanding the structure of water. Water is made up of one oxygen atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms through covalent bonds. And these bonds are formed due to the oxygen and hydrogen atoms sharing electrons. However, those shared electrons are actually pulled more towards the oxygen atom, making it slightly negative. And we show this using a delta negative symbol. In turn, this means the hydrogen atoms become slightly positive, and so we show this with the delta positive symbol. Now this difference between the oxygen and hydrogens has a really important effect on the molecule as a whole, and it makes it dipolar. All this means is that it has two poles, a positive pole and a negative pole. Now because of this polarity, if we put two water molecules close to each other, one water molecule's partially positive hydrogens will be attracted to the other water molecule's partially negative oxygens, and this causes a hydrogen bond to form. These are weak individually, but so many of them form that they are collectively strong, and as a result, they cause groups of water molecules to stick together. Next, let's look at some of the functions of water in living organisms. More specifically, let's consider acting as a solvent and metabolite, as a transport medium, being used for temperature control, and finally, as a habitat for some organisms. Let's begin with its function as a solvent and metabolite. First, we need to understand that many compounds in cells are ionic, which means that they're made up of ions. And remember, ions are basically just atoms with an electrical charge. Ionic compounds, like sodium chloride for example, have positive ions, which are called cations, so here that would be the sodium ions, and also negative ions, called anions, which here would be the chloride ions. Now when these compounds are added to water, they split into their ions and they dissolve, with the positive cations being attracted to the partially negative oxygens, and the negative anions being attracted to the partially positive hydrogens. Water is often described as a universal solvent, partly because so many substances can dissolve in it and can then be transported around, which is exactly what our blood plasma does, and that's why it's mostly water. It's also because most of our important biological reactions happen in solutions within the cytoplasm. And speaking of reactions, water is also a vital metabolite, which just means that it's involved in lots of metabolic reactions. For example, Hydrolysis reactions require water to break down large molecules, while condensation reactions release water to join molecules together. Also, water is a reactant in photosynthesis and is a product of respiration, a process all cells need to carry out in order to release energy. Next, let's explore water's role as a transport medium. Water is an effective transport medium because of its cohesive and adhesive properties, which mean that it can flow through organisms. And the fact that water is a good solvent means that it can carry other substances along with it as it flows. Now we use the term cohesion to describe how water molecules stick together because of the hydrogen bonds they form, whilst the term adhesion is when water molecules stick to other polar substances. As an example of this, in plant xylem vessels, the water moves upwards because of adhesion between water molecules and the xylem wall, and it moves in a continuous column because of cohesion, pulling water and dissolved minerals up through the plant as it goes. And additionally, because water is so cohesive, when bodies of water meet air, there's a really high surface tension at the water's surface, and this almost acts like a skin that can support small organisms like water striders. Let's move on to look at how water helps with temperature control. There are two main ways it does this. Acting as a temperature buffer and acting as a cooling mechanism. Starting with how it acts as a temperature buffer, this is because water has a high specific heat capacity, 
which means that it absorbs a lot of energy before its temperature changes. This is because each hydrogen bond absorbs energy before breaking, and there are lots and lots of hydrogen bonds in water. As organisms are mostly made of water, this property helps keep their temperature stable. It acts as a good cooling mechanism because water has a high latent heat of vaporization, meaning it needs a lot of energy to change from a liquid to a gas. And just like with the high specific heat capacity, this is also because of the large number of hydrogen bonds that it has. This means organisms can use water evaporation to lose lots of heat energy and cool down without losing too much water, like we do when we sweat. Now to finish up, let's talk about water's role as a habitat. As water has a high specific heat capacity and a high latent heat of vaporization, it provides a stable environment for many organisms because it remains at a fairly constant temperature and doesn't change state easily. Another feature that makes it useful as a habitat is that when water freezes at low temperatures, its hydrogen bonds cause the water molecules to be spaced further apart in solid ice than they are in liquid water, making the ice less dense than the liquid water. This means ice floats on top of water, which insulates the water below it and prevents it from freezing. This is really helpful for organisms living in lakes and ponds, as it helps to maintain a livable environment beneath the ice even during the coldest months of the year. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.